Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. In the last two videos, I talked about the Emissions Gap 2023 report put out by the UN uh, just uh, late last year, uh, for, uh, um, just before the uh, COP28 in Dubai. And I also talked about the Adaptation Gap report, um, also by the UN. And this is the third one um and uh, it's basically the it's called the uh the uh, production gap report 2023 so we've got countries all around the world talking about their climate plan saying yeah you know talking about net zero throwing all this jargon around but let's have a look at what they're actually doing in terms of fossil fuel production because fossil fuel production is still rising around the world at ever accelerating rates. And of course it's hammering the climate and therefore hammering us. So this report is called phasing down or phasing up. Top fossil fuel producers plan even more extraction despite their climate promises. So this is a case um, where their actions are completely opposite, effectively, to their words. And it's in multiple countries. Um, so this report actually looks at, you know, the top fossil fuel producers and assesses each country individually. Okay, so the first, um, this, base, this report is basically the, the fourth edition of the production gap report. So it was first issued in 2019. So it tracks misalignment between government's planned fossil fuel production and global production levels, consistent with limiting global warming to 1.5 or two. Again, they're still, they're not living in a realistic situation when they talk about 1.5, you know, even two degrees. So they've used uh, a collaboration of several research and academic institutions, um, more than 80 experts from 30 countries spanning the global north and global south to produce this report. It's peer reviewed. So basically they, um, the report looks at individual country profiles for 20 major fossil fuel producing countries it evaluates the government's latest climate ambitions and their plans, policies, and strategies that support fossil fuel production or the transition away from it. So they, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the talk. Okay, so let's have a look. So it's got the usual UN stuff, the acknowledgements, um, the, uh, then there's a uh, glossary so I'm sure you're aware, you know, we're carbon dioxide equivalent, right? You talk about the green, other greenhouse gases, methane, nitrous oxide, et cetera. And um, if you multiply the global warming potential of those other gases times the, um, the actual emissions uh, from those other gases, you get a CO2 equivalent. Um, you know, just, just transition, you've heard about this. Um, you know, shifting to a low carbon economy ensures disruptions are going to occur and to minimize those disruptions for workers, communities, consumers, they talk about this just transition, government subsidies to retrain people, et cetera, et cetera. There's a huge production gap, which is what this report's all about. A huge discrepancy between what governments are planning and saying and projecting and the levels of fossil fuel production that, you know, would limit warming and forget about, like I say, about the 1.5 and 2, 2 numbers. I mean, that's just absurd. Stranded assets, of course, are assets that suffer from write downs because, you know, if, you, if we say you can't bring up coal from the ground anymore, then, um, you know, that coal is a stranded asset. Subsidies, I mean, government subsidies are just out of control for fossil fuels. It's like we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the key findings. Um, this is, uh, there's a couple good forwards here, actually. 
climate change. This the first one is from the United Nations Environment Program Executive Director Inger Anderson. She says, you know, climate change has battered the world's most vulnerable for years. Now wealthier nations and communities find themselves taking hits as heat waves, droughts, wildfires, and storms grow. Right? The whole world is clinging to the handrails of a boat. The boat's lurching through increasingly turbulent seas. Nobody is safe. But some people have much bigger boats than other people, if I, you want to carry that analogy forward. Um, so we're basically, you know, we're addicted to fossil fuels. There's no question. Um, and governments, uh, you know, the, the addiction to fossil fuels still has its claws deep in many nations and governments. Governments are planning to produce and the world is planning to consume over double the amount of fossil fuels in 2030 that's consistent to limit global temperature rise, they say, to 1.5 Celsius. This is what the peer-reviewed IPCC, you know, UN document that was just came out like a, a month, just over a month ago, just before the, or two months ago, just before the COP, right? They're still saying this nonsense about 1.5 Celsius. Like, so you can tell that they've completely lost touch with reality. Um, but anyway, these plans, even these plans throw the global energy transition into question. They throw humanity's future into question. Governments must stop saying one thing and doing another, especially as it relates to the production and consumption of fossil fuels. So these numbers, you know, they're quoted here, even though they're wrong, we've already exceeded uh, the, this target. You know, the words are very strong about, about governments and what they're doing. And then there's a, there's a, there's a Stockholm Institute, Environment Institute, the executive director, Mans Nilsson, um, he says, the recent global energy crisis and the worsening climate crisis have a common root, our excessive dependence on fossil fuels. That root must be severed to get real energy security and climate security. Governments must lead a swift and just transition away from fossil fuels towards clean energy. And yet, as this report shows, the world's government still, in aggregate, plan on increasing coal production out to 2030. The world governments, they plan on increasing oil and gas production out to at least 2050. Most have pledged net zero emissions by mid-century, a necessary target, but one that can only become a reality if translated into concrete plans and actions to reduce production and use of coal, oil, and gas. So they say they have plans, and yet they, they still go gung-ho all in on fossil fuels. And it's just, a, it's just an absurd um, situation. I mean, it's cognitive dissonance, right? They say one thing and do the complete opposite. There's a nice uh, uh, pipe system, probably at a refinery of some sort. Um, Okay, now these reports also give, they give very lengthy executive summaries. They show lots of plots and graphs and stuff. And then they go into the main bulk of the report and they show the exact same graphs and stuff, right? Plus additional graphs and stuff. So these reports are often twice as long as they need to be. Anyway, let's have a look at some of these graphs. So, so this is global fossil fuel production gigatons of CO2 equivalent per year, emissions. This is where we are. This is government plans and projections. Yet they state, uh, they state different policies which would lower this, and uh, they announce pledges which often aren't met, which would lower it more, and they say this is a path for two degrees, this is a path for 1.5. The problem is, is that we're already at 1.5, so the path to 1.5 should actually be, this should be a vertical drop right here, or actually, because we've exceeded 1.5, it sh the curve should wind back. So we need a time reversal, time machine situation to get to stay below 1.5, right? So it, it's just it's just absurd. And you see graph after graph, like when will, climate change is changing way too fast for these, uh, 
bureaucratic institutions to to uh, put out reports that make any sense, basically. That's the bottom line. So there you go. Um, let's have a look. Uh, since it was first quantita quantified in 2019, the global production gaps has remained largely unchanged. Despite in it's actually decreased significantly because temperatures have accelerated upward. So, right? I mean, sweeping statements are 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 just wrong. Um, despite encouraging signs of an emerging clean energy transition, the world's governments still plan to produce more than double the amount of fossil fuels in 2030. That would be consistent with limiting warming to 1.5, <laughs> you know, the 1.5, 1.5, it's, it's just absurd. Um, so many fossil fuel producing governments are still planning near-term increases in coal production and long-term increases in oil and gas production. In total, government plans and projections would lead to an increase in global pr production until 2030 for coal and until at least 2050, an increase in global production for oil and gas. So the production gaps are will be huge, 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 huge. And this is, uh, so I showed this graph for the total um, emissions, and this is, coal, this is uh, exajoules per year of energy produced from coal production. So this is government plans and policies from oil production and from gas production right still increasing okay uh this is what the government says right they, they can't they, they're totally dishonest about all of this no wonder why people don't trust them this is announced pledges you know people pledge things well you don't put the money behind it the pledge is just that of to pledge you know they're not these pledges aren't being honored and then, you know, they talk about the 2 and 1.5. You still, you need vertical straight lines going down. So I would redraw, I would redo these, all these graphs and have a vertical line going straight down. You know, show, throw a bit of honesty into this, into this sort of stuff. You know, uh, this is uh, a breakdown into some of the top um, major fossil fuel producers. And, uh, you know, when their um, their status of their national net zero commitment, their net zero target year, basically. And this is the plan changes in annual fossil fuel production for 2030 relative to 2021. So coal still going up, oil a push, gas going up for Australia. You know, it's, it's got them alphabetically and you can see um, there's China, a big drop in coal, uh, increase in gas, uh, you know, so you can see what each country is actually doing versus what they're saying. Government should be more transparent in their plans, projections, and support for fossil fuel production and how they align with national and international goals, okay? They, they, they have a complete cognitive dissonance, uh, you know, brain hemisphere disconnect. Right, one half of the brain is giving the the plan, saying here's we're going to go to net zero. The other half of the brain is, is well, this is what we're doing. We have to make more money from fossil fuels, more money, more coal, more oil, more gas, natural gas, liquefied natural gas. You know, it's just <laughs> like like they think people are stupid, like they're you know, it's just it's it's absurd. The whole system is is broken and. It's coming down like a house of cards, basically. Um, and then you get into the main part of the report and they show the same graphs over and over again, like I said. See, there's another one. I mean, they just, they show it. We saw this 15 pages earlier. Why do you have to repeat the same nonsense to make, to bulk up your report? Like, it's just absurd. Okay, here's a new one. Coal production, and it divides it into the different countries, government, plans and projections and uh you know what the different countries are doing there's china is the orange and so you can compare india is the next one indonesia is the next one and so on so you can see the breakdown among different countries for coal for oil and for gas production so there's lots of good data to see what countries are actually doing and then they they show coal oil and gas again and then they show renewables 
um, and different emissions and different ideas from carbon capture and effects and land use and stuff. So then they make up stuff that, hey, we're going to capture all this carbon at some point in the future with some magic technology, even though there's no land uh, area sufficient to allow their plans to be realized. Uh, more stuff on production. Um, this, I think, is interesting. This is extraction-based greenhouse gas emissions for coal, oil, and gas. Uh, China's in the lead. The U.S. is probably upset. They have to pass China. They're, they're probably concerned. Oh, China's got more emissions than us. We've got to catch up. We've got to threaten China and say that they're going to take over the world and build up a global coalition against them. So, you know, it's... Uh, anyway, uh, the tables on all the different countries... Let's go down to look at some of the individual countries here. So here we go. Okay, so so this is uh, this chapter, I believe, is on it's it's on what individual countries are doing. So there's China. Okay, let's look at China. So they aim to have CO two emissions peak before 2030 and get carbon neutrality by 2060. The, uh, they're going gung ho on fossil on on clean and efficient development of fossil fuels. They say, bolstering China's energy security. The central themes of government discourse for achieving the dual carbon goals: IP emissions and carbon neutrality. Um, so this is a right. So they're here's China. They pro they produce 52.7 percent of the world's coal. They're first, number one. Right, they're anybody producing over fifty has to be number one, right? By definition, oil they're six, four point seven percent of world oil production, and gas they're fourth, uh, four point nine percent. Okay, uh, upper middle income three point nine coal workers per thousand workers, coal economic dependence sort of medium to high. Share of GDP from oil and gas production, 3%, right? If you look at some of these major producers, those numbers are much higher. This is this is graphs from their coal, oil, and gas. Um, they talk about the government support and subsidies um, to, or to fossil fuel uh, companies. Um, okay, the U.S. So the U.S., um, their emissions reduction target, is 50 to 52 percent below 2005 levels by 2030 net zero by 2050. meanwhile their uh, rec their energy production is at record all-time high levels fourth in the world for coal which is 7.1 percent of coal production in the world first in oil 17.2 percent surpassing saudi arabia and gas are first by a huge margin, about a quarter of the world's uh, gas production. This is natural gas or methane. High income, 0.3 coal workers per 1,000 workers. High dependence on coal. 8% of their GDP is from oil and gas production. So, you know, that's a big chunk of the U.S. economy. So they're not going to reduce it, are they? Right? There's curves and so on. So they're going to, you know, how long are these countries and people going to start talking about about uh, net zero and, and it, it's, it's BS. They're just dropping you a line. Russian Federation aiming to reduce net greenhouse gas emissions to 30 percent below 1990 levels by 2030. Um, carbon neutrality by 2060. Um you know, they, they need the fossil fuel production to buy their guns and weapons to continue their war um, and invasion of Ukraine, the ongoing war. Six in the world for coal, 6.4% of global production, oil second, 12.6%, gas second, 18.9%. Okay, 19% um, of their GDP is from oil and gas production. Right, I mean, oil and gas production is embedded so deeply into into the economy of 
many, many of the major, uh, you know, major financially, major economically countries of the world. So you can see it's just it, we're 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 going to drive ourselves into oblivion rather than reduce fossil fuels. I mean, that's what we're seeing right now. Uh, curves and so on. So Saudi Arabia is there. You know, they're still a very, very big producer. Not a coal. Uh, they don't produce much coal. Oil, they're third, 12.4% of global production. Gas, 10, 2.4%. And 50% uh, of their GDP is from oil and gas production. Saudi Arabia. So there you go. How are they, how, who's, how's that going to, how's that going to go to zero? It's just, yeah, it's just laughable if you didn't live on this planet. I guess I don't. I'm, I'm on a different planet, so is Elon Musk, I think. Um, this is what, Australia? Big, big coal producers. 3% um, of GDP, GDP is from oil and gas. They, they don't have coal in this number, you know. <laughs> Why not? I don't know. Anyway, um, so yeah, there's lots of other countries, uh, Indonesia, there's lots of other countries listed. So the bottom line is, yeah, governments, uh, you know, they're playing the public relations propaganda game. They're saying they're going to reduce emissions, um, and yet their plans and their fossil fuel production is a huge part of their GDP, so they're just not going to get rid of it. So what does this mean for the world? It means that the only thing possible is to develop some magic, in quotes, technologies as quick as possible, to pull CO2 out of the atmosphere, and to cool the planet from solar radiation management methods. There, there's no other, I mean, the fossil fuel industry is so entrenched, it's just not going to disappear. I think people need to realize this. Slashing fossil fuels is just, Ain't, ain't gonna happen um why should we think it's gonna happen so anyway very extensive report there is some good information in there but you know the, the nonsense on gaps for 1.5 and 2 well just forget about those it's it's total nonsense anyway um yeah please consider donating to my website paulbeckwith.net to my paypal to support my research and videos thanks again and bye for now